Once we have cut out our pattern pieces, we need to neaten the edges to stop the pieces from fraying. And so I'm going to assume that we're just going, you haven't got access to an overlocker, so we're just going to zigzag around all the edges. I have cut out on the salvage edge, so I won't need to zigzag that edge. Once you have sewn around all the edges with the zigzag stitch, then we are going to pin them together. We will start with the lining. We want to pin approximately 1.5 centimeters from the edge. On two short sides and one long side. Then we want to fold that in half, mark the fold there and then pin down the middle. And this is where we will be sewing our straight stitch. So it needs to look something like that. We now want to do a straight edge of stitching where the pins are. Oops. have two openings there for our filling stitched all the way around so now what we want to do is sew some stitching across the top here but we want to leave a gap with about that much So now that we've done that, we'll put that to one side and work on the outside. We begin by pinning our pieces together. First off, we want to lay the pieces right sides together. Oops, that one here. 
Now I have got a salvage edge here, so I don't need to neaten that edge. What I will do is stitch that down to neaten that edge. If you don't have a salvage edge like that, then you would need to zigzag or overlock that edge. All pinned together, now I stitch around the outside edge of that 1.5 centimeters from the edge. Remember, your machine should have a mark on this part here. And the outside mark generally is 1.5 centimeters, but you would need to check that. So I have sewn all the way around the edge with a straight stitch. Next we need to cut off all the uh, excess threads sticking out. Once we have hopefully cut off all our threads, um, we need to turn this in the right way. So we do that. Right, so I just need to pull out the corners and you might need to use something a little bit sharper to give those corners a push out. I use a quick arm pick to tease the corners out very gently because you, otherwise if you're not gentle you will poke a hole in your fabric. We don't want that. We take our funnel and place it in the hole at the top of the liner and then we take our rice. Seeing if that is enough in there, I think it might be, so that was one cup of rice. So we'll take the funnel out and then we need to pin that close, so you might need a couple of pins to stop the rice from escaping. And then we go over to the other side of the lining bag and repeat the process. Now 
Now make sure you get a funnel with a reasonable size spout otherwise the rice will just get stuck in there. So once we've done that pin up it again pin it up again and then we need to stitch that up. So what I did was just stitch the two gaps up there. Unfortunately the video stopped recording so I can't show you that part. But you just need to make sure the rice kernels are down there, rice grains, grunt, whatever. Um, and then you won't get, shouldn't get any um, where you are sewing. And then you just do the straight stitch between the two bits. And then... all good to go so just going to go around and trim up the threads again now we take the lining bag and we insert it in to the cover now the great thing about the cover of course is that if it gets dirty Take it off and wash it. Now this is quite a small heat pad, so of course you can make it any size you like. So find it easier to push it down into one end and then just jiggle it about until it fits into the whole cover. And there you have it. Your heat pad.